This is a story about tough choices along with the happy moments in life. This is the story of the good, the bad, and the ugly written by Lauren Bernhardt. It's such a beautiful spring day. I think I'm going to hop along to Honeybee's Community Park and find a friend to hang out with. Chad and Dog were at the park sniffing the various selection of wildflowers. I cannot choose to walk with my friend when they go to my park. Although, Although their true personality could not be shown through their appearance, Bunny listed the pros and cons of both cat and dog. I want to play with you. Bunny did not care at all. No, play with me. I'm so cute. He's so ugly. Bunny left the ugly cat for the cute dog. Little did Bunny know what dog was really like. Sorry, but I don't want your ugliness to rub off on me. While playing with her new pal, Bunny realized that Dog's personality did not match his good looks. I'm going to swing! Hey, it was my turn to swing. Well, I'm better looking and just better than you, so I can do whatever I want, whenever, always. Oh, snap! Eric, you alone? I'll be my cat. Dog was upset that he had lost his new friend. Try to tap me, Thank you so much. I was wrong about it, cat. I thought you didn't like it. <coughs> Although you're not the best looking, you're very kind. Thank you, I want to be friends. After that, whether big or small, short or tall, Bunny was kind to all. And the moral is, don't, don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> In a small village of Fernlandia lived a little mouse in. Mouse lived in a little cottage with her papa tiger. The first day of school was coming up, and Mouse was happy to be with her friend Cat. Okay, good, Mouse. And remember to do your best. Don't worry, Papa. I'll be fine. Mouse enters her school and heads toward her classroom. She finds Cat in the crowd. Hi, Cat. I missed you so much. Ew. Get away from me. I have a new friend, Chicken. Hi, I'm Chicken. Stay away. After school, Mouse starts to cry and goes to complain to her papa. Papa, my friend is being mean. She explains what happened while crying with sadness. You have to be able to stand up for herself. The next day, Mouse decides to talk to Cat. Seriously, Mouse? Leave already. You should stop being such a jerk to me. Chicken notices how rude Cat is being to Mouse. Cat, you should stop being so rude to Mouse. She did nothing to you. What's your problem? The problem is your rudeness. Come on, let's go. Come on, Mouse, let's go. Cat feels guilty for how she treated Mouse. I should say sorry to Mouse. Cat walks up to Mouse and Chicken and apologizes to Mouse for being rude. I'm so sorry for the way I've been treating you lately. I forgive you. And the moral is. Don't be a bystander, stand up to bullies. The Fruit Thief by Riley Tobin. One day in the jungle, Bear was enjoying some fruit. He heard a huge noise and ran to see what it was. Meanwhile, Monkey was swinging through the trees when he spotted Bear's fruit. Mmm, that sure does look like some yummy fruit. I bet Bear wouldn't mind if I took some. I mean, hibernation isn't until next week. After investigating the noise, Bear came back to enjoy some fruit. Whoa, that was an adventure. I'm hungry. Where's my fruit? <laughs> Bear went to his good friend Elephant to ask if he had seen his fruit. Did you take my fruit? No, Bear, I don't like fruit. I only eat peanuts. <laughs> While walking back to a snack spot, Bear runs into Monkey. I wonder who took my fruit. Oh, sorry, Bear. I took your fruit. That's okay. Just this once, but don't do it again. Oh, of course. Thank you so very much for understanding. The next day, Bear was at a snack spot with his fruit again. I bet Bear wouldn't mind if I took a couple more pieces of fruit. When Bear came home, he saw his fruit had been stolen again. Who stole my fruit this time? I bet it was Monkey. Oh, he stole my fruit again. Bear went to Elephant's house to discuss a plan of what to do about Monkey. We have to think of a good plan to get back at him. You're right, we'll steal all of his bananas, maybe around Monkey. Maybe at Monkey's house around noon. Sounds good. The next day, Bear was at his snack spot with his fruit. 
There's that sound again. It looks like some more fruit to eat. Time for the plan. A few minutes later, Bear and Elephant meet up at Monkey's house. Wow, Monkey has so, so many bananas. I know. I wonder why he needs all my fruit. Later, when Monkey got home, where's all my fruit? I know it went. Bear must have stolen it. Then Monkey goes to confront Bear. Oh, hello, Monkey. Why are you here? You stole all my bananas. Well, you stole all my fruit, so me and Alpha stole all your bananas. But since they are yours, I guess I'll give them back. And the moral is. Two wrongs don't make a right. The Penguin Story by Naomi Marks. Once upon a time, birds were not meant to fly, even though it was all they wanted in the world. I solved the equation. I figured it out. What is it, Elle? What did you possibly mean? I figured out how to make birds fly. As the owl explains his theorem to Dove, Penguin overhears what he is saying. I have a feeling this flying idea will not work out in my favor. What? Oh, I'm sure it will, Penguin. According to this, these calculations, you might be the only bird that can fly. After the owl explains to all the birds how to fly, Penguin is the only one not enjoying the air against his wings. I'm scared I don't belong here. You don't have to fit in. You stand out. And that's one point. Don't worry about it. But thanks, Eagle. I feel so much better now. All thanks to you. Penguin, with his newfound confidence, nervous as stuff flying by. Penguin! Eagle! Funny to see you here. Ha ha ha, Doc. Remember what I said. You want to hang out sometime? I'd like nothing better. Why, thank you. I feel so much better now about not being able to fly. Even though Penguin felt so left out when he wasn't able to fly, his friends Dove and Eagle cheered him up and boosted his self-esteem. And the moral is... You don't have to fit in to be confident. Banana tree. He didn't notice the big ditch right in his way. 